Big preparations are definitely underway across the board. The State Emergency Operations Center taking no chances with this storm. Yeah, they have hundreds of members on standby ready to respond. And our Bill O'Neill got a chance to go inside of the facility, and he's giving us a closer look now. Right now inside the Emergency Operations Center, there are 400 people at work keeping an eye on Dorian, ready to respond once it hits. Air operations controls everything that flies, a sort of air traffic control. It's commanded by the air boss. The air boss is what? I would say I'm managing all the rotary wing and fixed wing aviation assets in response to the hurricane. Colonel Harper says the unit assesses damaged levees and dams, supplies food and water to flood victims, and conducts rescue operations. If it's somebody like standing on a roof on a trailer in the water, that's where we'll come and perform a search and rescue mission and get them out of there. See on the screen behind me. The state not only tracks flooding, it can predict where flooding will happen. Even identify which local buildings will flood through a network of some 500 gauges across the state. And how is this valuable, especially now when we have a, a major storm like this? Well, it helps us determine what areas potentially could be flooded, which roads are going to be flooded. Volunteers make up a large part of the Emergency Operations Center. Groups like the North Carolina Baptist on Mission are prepared to help feed storm victims, clear debris, and even make repairs on damaged homes. How long have you been doing this? Well, I've been with Baptist Men about 10 years um, in this position, about uh, about 12 months. <laughs> Gratifying, I would imagine? Absolutely, absolutely. Explain it's always, always good to uh, serve the Lord and help people in need. It's hard to estimate the cost of this operation, but a spokesman for emergency management says just yesterday, the state of North Carolina spent two and a half million dollars. In Raleigh, I'm Bill O'Neill, WXII 12 News.